How's it going, YouTube? Jamie the Kid Zero Zero here, coming back with uh, game two of Cardiff Regional's top four: Mermail versus Mermail against Ping Zhao. Um, I'm going to be taking first turn in this. Um, Ping is uh, trying to guesstimate my hand for me, um, and he calls it wrong because he says, "Oh, there's um, I think three Megalo in hand," and I'm like, "I don't play three Megalo," so he's instantly wrong. Um, but I'm afraid uh, a lot of this is going to be uh, blind commentary because I don't remember anything I drew in this game and my cameraman's being terrible at the start. All I know is that from turn one I have a set MST and that MST is going to stay with me for quite some time. I'm pretty sure it's a set MST and I'm fairly sure I've set a Lind at this point as well. So I'm going to uh, set a monster, set two back row and Ping is going to draw for his turn. Uh, Ping is going to activate the effect of Tidal to Foolish Burial card. And uh, it's, of course, going to be followed up by the effect of Marksman. I ask him, of course, to resolve his title before uh, resolving the Marksman. At first, I was asking him, uh, what is this the cost for? Because I thought he was uh, going for a Megalo Summon turn one. So he thinks about There's going to be quite a bit of thinking time in this. As you get higher up in a regionals elimination cut, you are going to be thinking quite a bit more. You are going to be making the most of your time limit. And this is going to be a 17-minute game, so can ex you can expect a fair few waits. So uh, I must apologize for that. So he's going to send a, a, a Mermail Abyss Teus, setting himself up, I guess, for um, a Megalo gun play or a Teus gun play to give him an easy rank 7 play. Um, I could have agreed with the Pike play, to be fair. Um, setting up the Turge plays... But I didn't know his hand, so it's fair enough. So he offers me the cut after sending. Uh, I cut. Uh, and then he's going to target my closest to the camera back row with the marksman that was sent as the cost. Uh, I'm going to just send the Divine Wrath. I'm not going to chain it. He offers to let me chain it, and I'm like, no, Ping, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I don't want to go minus one from my hand. Thank you. Those Divine Wraths were really quite good um, for most of the day. It's when I sided them in for this mirror. Um, I don't think I saw them in top 8, but he's going to banish the Marksman for an Aqua Spirit and tribute the Aqua Spirit for Vanity's Fiend, which kind of prompted an ooh from everyone watching the game. This was a really, really big card that dominated the game. He attacked, of course, over the Lind, which you knew was going to be set, and um, that Vanity's Fiend is an incredibly strong card in the matchup, and I was very surprised to see it come out. However, I understand how good it is uh, for Ping. So I drew for my turn, passed back to him, and he draws for his just before people start accusing uh, accusing him of skipping turns. He prepares to alter the life points, because he knows he's going to be swinging in for free. He summons a Lind, because, hey, free damage. He tries. He says, oh, I'll bait the Torrential. I didn't actually play Torrential, but didn't tell him that. He attacks with the Lind, and then attacks with the um, Vanity's Fiend, putting me to 41, dealing me 39, I believe. <clears throat> he passes turn, I draw for mine. Um, and this is going to take me quite some time to set up a play that allows me to deal with that Vanity's Fiend. I believe this is the turn where I summon a Pike. I'm hoping it is. But this is this is a horrendous field. Yep, I summon a Pike. I keep moving cards back because there's such a distance. I have to outstretch my arms to have them by the line. Um, I activate its effect, I believe, sending a Marksman or a Lind, something really inconsequential. Um... Yeah, I send the Lind, Ping immediately sent the uh, the Vanity's Fiend, thinking that I was lucky enough to have uh, uh, infantry. Sadly not, I search out the Undyne to give me access to the infantry play next turn, but that, uh, that V Fiend is ridiculous. So uh, at least because the Pike is 16, I can attack over the, um, the Lind, which means the Lind won't get its effect because of his own Vanity's Fiend. Ping's banner is outrageous. I recommend looking at the uh, the original video because here he kind of trips me up. I I attack with the uh, the pike into the lind and he goes pike's destroyed, and for a, a brief moment I'm like wait wait have I missed something? He's he's ridiculously good at throwing you off. I guess maybe it's just because I'm feeble minded, but I set an extra back row and then pass turn to ping. Uh, so the vanity's fiend is still sitting strong. He summons another lind, which is really powerful. Of course, that Lind, if I want to focus on killing the uh, the Vanity's Fiend, is going to stick. He attacks my Pike with the Vanity's Fiend, dealing me 800, I believe, putting me to 31. Um, yep, and then attacking with the Lind, putting me to 16, I think. I think it's 16. 21. Yeah, should be 16. Should be 16. My math might be off somewhere. I, 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 I'm pretty crap at this. So he's got his Vanity's Fiend. 
Still locking me out. I've got my two back row that keep falling off camera, so please do make a mental note that there are two back row, even if they do fall off camera. So I go for the Undyne, <clears throat> finally getting out from under the uh, the monkey on my back that was that um, Vanity's Fiend. I'm of course going to send the infantry. Uh, search out a controller. The camera just n is not wide enough. I keep bitching out to uh, buy a wide angle lens. But um, yeah, I'm going to search out the controller, which you can just see on the corner there. And offer the cut after I'm done shuffling. People complain that I shuffle for too long. I, I kind of do. I shuffle too thoroughly. At first he's reluctant to cut because he says, Oh, you're probably going back in. You've probably got drops. And I really haven't. My hand is that dire, honestly. That, um, there's no further plays to make. Um, I literally have to pass. I'm pretty sure the cameraman jokes uh, pass. And I actually do. I then pass turn. Which is, which is ridiculous. You can see the hand gesture there. Ping draws for his turn. Um... And that Lind is pretty strong. I think I've gone wrong on the math somewhere. But, uh... Oh, well. I'll, I'll correct myself later on. Um, so he goes into the title. Uh, I consider having a response, because I have the Divine Wrath. Because if that title summon sticks, I do lose, um, life points wise. So I do Divine Wrath the title, sending the controller from my hand, I believe... Still can't see my grave. I really wish I pushed the stuff up, but it was such a long stretch on my arms. I was just focusing on being comfortable at this point. It had been eight... I'd played eight games so far. I was getting pretty tired. So he thinks his play's through. He can't do title again, obviously, because title says you can only use this effect once per turn. Um, I allow him to check my graveyard. You can now actually see my grave for the first time in ages. I did use the controller for the um, Divine Wrath. So he... Uh, Considers attacking with the Lind. Enters the battle phase. I believe. I'm not sure what the okay hand signal was. Still thinking. Still thinking. Uh, attacks with the Lind. I take 300. I can now clarify that that face down back row is um, an, a mystical space typhoon. Uh, because it's been dead all game. I'm not sure how much of his back row he sided out, but that MST has been so dead. And it's killing me, because I'm pretty sure I'm holding gores. Very, very sure I'm holding gores at this point. So, I consider my options, check my back row, uh, set the sphere that I've drawn, and pass turn back to ping. And I'm going to have to pause my uh, narration in a short bit, because there is a bit of audio which I really do need to play to you guys, because it's incredible on this. But um, we're going to continue this narration for a little bit longer. Jaws for his turn. Um, that Lind is... I believe I'm on 18 at this point. I, I seem to remember that's what the game was at. Um, so he activates the effect of Mermail of Isteus, uh sending a Gund from his hand to special summon the Teus. I think about my options. Teus, of course, lets him summon. Uh, sorry, Teus, of course, lets him search, and Gun lets him summon. Just thinking. I believe I actually play, I make a maxi play here. That's why he opts not to um, Gund. In the end, I'm pretty sure I've discarded a maxi. In response to the summon of the first Teus, so the set is not going to activate the Gund because the Gund is optional, unlike the Atlanteans, which are compulsory. Yeah, you can see a Maxi on top of my uh, on top of my graveyard. Mm -hmm. So he searches out a new Gund. Sorry, my phone vibrated. Um, he searches out a new Gund, offers me the cut. I do so. He takes the deck back, and he's still got enough damage on the board to deal game damage if he so chooses. So, we're going to see how he goes about this. He enters the battle phase, attacks with Lind, I uh, chain sphere, I activate Sphere, he activates MST in response, and then I activate my own MST, which is, um, which he questions for a minute. Uh, I chain my own MST, so the Sphere hasn't resolved, so MST can be activated, and I activate my own Gores from my hand, and for a brief moment, he doesn't believe that I've actually dropped Gores. I've seen that MST sit oh, there. Oh, hey, you actually have, a, you actually have Gores? Yeah. I see you were joking. No, I legit have gores. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, crap. 
I did not realize you actually sat into yours. That I didn't sign into it. I made it. Oh fuck! <laughs> I sat and watched the MSC just, there for like five turns and ping not at anything, and she'd be like, yeah. "Oh shit." Just... With that little bit of uh, humorous audio out of the way, uh, somewhat bewildered and still kind of uh, hindered by Max seat, uh, Ping kind of ends his turn there. Um, giving me a chance to get back into the game with 300 life points remaining, with a, a lone Gauze on field, but a hand of three cards. Those three cards actually become incredibly, incredibly relevant soon. So I check my grave, I really start to think out my next couple of turns before I make anything stupid, because I finally have a way out of this incredibly, incredibly crushing game. Throughout the game, Ping has just been completely on top of me and uh, I might actually have a chance to turn the game around. I ask him if he still has a title engraved, and he says, of course, with plenty of targets to boot, which he just shows me. So I activate my uh, Megalo, sending, I believe, Teus and Gund. It was an incredible hand. I drew into lead, uh, sorry, not Teus, uh, ditching lead and Gund. I actually drew into the lead, but I really didn't mind at that time. So Megalo searches me out, I believe a copy of Abyss Squall, because my uh, grave is so darn stocked at the moment. I'm fairly sure. Oh, it's going to be spin. No, my, my gra what am I on about my grave being stocked? It's really not. Also, no, I didn't draw the, the lead. I um, I had a, a Lind, and I gunned it back. My bad. It's been like two weeks since this still happened, so I'm still trying to remember it. Um, so uh, I gunned the, le uh, the Lind back. Um, that Lind, of course, is going to give me uh, a crash to get a lead play. Um, and that crash will also force anything he summons off of his Lind to miss timing. So I'm going to switch the Gauze to attack and try and reclaim board presence. Because I really need to clean the board and take board dominance. Um, my Lind crashing into his Lind is almost as good as um, Abyss Dwellering his Lind. Because it means that whatever he summons, because I'm turn player, will come out at chain link 2. Meaning that um, he, whatever he summons will miss timing. If it's a Pike or a Turj. Meaning that the only thing you can really summon is another big Mermail. The biggest thing, of course, you can summon is lead, and uh, lead is not as big as Gaios, which was the big thing that it meant. That was that was the big concern to me. But thankfully for me, he's one of these Mermail players who I believe doesn't play lead. I'm fairly sure he doesn't summon lead off of the um, the Lind. So I remind him that whatever he summons, uh, I will miss timing when it comes out. Not gonna. Uh, not going to remind him when he's uh, searching for his target. Not at regionals. You don't. You, you just don't do that. I'm just. I'm just not a nice guy at uh, major events. So he thinks. He searches. He thinks. He thinks. He thinks. I'm waiting, of course, to, for him to do his search before I do mine because his cha his is chain link two. I get the benefit of the knowledge of what he summons. So we're just going to wait while he thinks some more. Reviews his hand. Reviews his grave for about the third time in this thinking period. It, re it, do it does take some time. I'm sorry, it's quite hard to narrate over uh, long periods of time like this. Or well, long periods of waiting like this. So he thinks, he thinks, he thinks. I believe he goes for an Abyss Turge. I don't think he goes for something big. Considers his plays. Considers his options. I move my monsters up because the cameraman is yet again uh, reminding me that you can't see my monsters because they were so far off. So he goes for the Turj. I think it's the Turj. I'm pretty sure it's the Turj. Yeah, he goes for the Turj. And then uh, before he drops a card from his hand, um, at this point I don't actually see what it is. I remind him that it does miss timing. And I, before he goes to put it back, I say that the summon, is, the summon happens, but you can't activate its effect because it does miss timing. I just wanted to say it missed timing at that point because I didn't want to see his card. Um... The cameraman actually pointed the camera at me and called me a rule shark, but I'm just I was just reminding him of the uh of the rules. I was not rule sharking. And uh gets a bit of a giggle out of me. It was it was all it was all in good fun. So I special summon the lead. Um which is was in my opinion the obvious choice. Uh I attack with the Megalo over the Turge, uh, attack with my gauze into his um Teus for a thousand and then directly for two thousand seven hundred with um lead. Judging by his shock about the whole gauze thing, I felt I felt it was a fairly safe bet that he wasn't playing a gauze of his own. Um uh, after this attack, I think for quite a while about whether or not I want to go for um Gaios and not tribute my Megalo to take a card out of his hand, 
or if I want to stick to, um, uh, or if I want to go to a Draco sack play and take a card out of his hand with Leeds effect. I think for quite some time, uh, this is probably the biggest decision of my regionals, um, and I'm kind of glad that I get it right. Um, I really, really do need to think about my play. Bearing in mind I'm on 300 life points, I joke with him saying, oh, if I'm, if I, I want to make Draco sack, but if I do, um, I lose to Gaia Dragoon. And I know that Ping has played some really trollsy techs in the past, and I really didn't want to run into a Gaia Dragoon if he was playing it. Gaia Dragon, sorry. I keep saying his Japanese name, which is Dragoon. Uh, I really don't want to go running into a, a, a Gaia Dragon with... Um, with Dracosec. But I uh, I come to the decision, hey, um, why not take the chance? Like almost every other Mermel player wouldn't play it. Surely Ping is competent is it, it, Ping wouldn't play it. I don't see any reason why he would. So I do arrive at the decision he's not playing it. And if he has it, he has it and it was a good game. But um, at this point I do just conclude to go for it. So I almost make the Gaius Almost make the guys. You can see the the thought in my ha in my hands. You can see how much thought I'm having to put into this. Uh, I then activate the lead. I go for it. Uh, I roll the dice to randomly choose the card and go for the uh, that one. I hit the gund for a brief moment. He thinks he can special summon, but I double check the wording on my lead, and the wording does say um, send, not discard. So the gund cannot activate, which is fantastic news. So the Gund was hit, his effect does not activate, and I'm then free to overlay my two remaining monsters for a defensive Draco Sack. That Draco Sack is then going to give me some really solid defensive presence on, a, on an otherwise completely empty board, giving me some really good survivability against what will be two cards in his hand and a title. That's what I really needed to account for. So I felt that if he got the Teus live play, uh, he was fine, but otherwise, um, if he can't get the Teus title into Big Eye, I win. So he uh, tentatively draws for his turn, really thinks his play is out, but um, he's actually surprisingly uh, drawn quite dead, and we are going to be able to see a glorious game three, um, and maybe in game three I'll actually draw um, a half-decent hand. So we're hoping. He considers making the title play, and eventually he does actually banish two for his title, but he does conclude that he can't get over my field reliably with just the title because the rest of his hand was a dud. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed and I will see you guys with game three hopefully tomorrow.